everyone, I'm Dominique Sharpton. And I'm Ashley Sharpton. And although you may not know us, you probably know our dad. So Dominique. Yes, sir. The Reverend Al Sharpton. I call him Rev. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Growing up under our father's wings was definitely a unique experience. Yes, Doc. We've got some stories to tell. Ah, I didn't know you knew that. That is correct. That's what the last time I do y'all show. What do you think? And we have some friends who want to share their unique experiences and stories as well. It's extremely important for our young people to understand the power of who we are. So please join us for our new talk show. We, we are... are the sharpest sister. Sister. Oh Sorry, the last line. <laughs> I forgot. Welcome everyone to the Sharpton Sisters. Today we're talking about being the children of activist parents. Dominique and I are well acquainted with this experience. It's a source of pride for us, but make no mistake. It can also be difficult and not something many can relate to. Our guest today is the daughter of Malcolm X and Dr. Betty Shabazz, a family whose politics and actions are representative of a very crucial time in our civil rights history. Please welcome Ilyasa Shabazz. Oh, hi, Ilyasa! Hi. <laughs> I know you didn't expect me to look like this. Ilyasa, how are you doing, girl? <laughs> I'm fine. How about you, beautiful young lady? We're, we're doing well, considering. We're good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Lot, <laughs> lot going on. Backdrop. I like the flowers. Oh! <laughs> thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Yeah, thank I you. like thank the you. gold and the red. Everything. You guys are just like really, really doing it. Yes. Thank now you. we know that you have five other sisters, but That's we're right. also your little sisters. We claim you as our big sister, and you know things that has brought us together in many different capacities, many different facets, uh, but we always looked to Ilyasa as one of our big sisters. Of course. <laughs> Something that many people do not know is that your mother, the queen, Dr. Betty Shabazz, is our godmother. Yes. Um, and she was responsible for so many things in our life, but most importantly for putting us in private school and making sure that our parents understood um, how to protect us and basically teach us in the proper way. She was a real guiding light to my mother and to my father yes. in many different ways. Um, and to and the movement just, as a whole. Yes, and it just speaks volumes. I feel like we can't you know, pay tribute or homage to Malcolm X's legacy without mentioning and paying homage to Dr. Betty Shabazz. That's right. That's right, you know, I have to say, even when I think about it, right, because my mother had six girls right? She's the wife of a man who challenged a government that was historically unjust. And witnessing her husband's assassination, living through a, her home being firebombed, and taking care of six girls that she was still so filled with love and compassion and care that she wanted to make sure that Reverend Sharpton and Kathy Sharpton's girls were properly educated. And when I say properly educated, I mean, you know, we're so fortunate that we had parents that made sure that we knew who we were as uh, women of the African diaspora, right? Of uh, being just women, uh, so many things. We learned about our heritage, our culture, our, our identity, which fortified who we were, gave us a great foundation, our identity purpose, but also making sure we had a quality education. And usually, uh, a quality education, you know, was not afforded by a lot of people who looked like us. Talk. That's right. And so I always take my hat off to my mother because, you know, in our household, there were six girls that she put through, you know, this kind of schooling, providing all of these activities, extracurricular activities and so forth. But then also we had Nina Simone's daughter who lived with us, Lisa, you know, who we called sister number seven and you two who were like sister number eight and nine. <laughs> Absolutely. She was a phenomenal woman. A phenomenal, phenomenal amazing and rarity. woman. Now, everybody knows this. You know, if you, if you know history, Black history, then you know, of course, the story of how Malcolm X was assassinated. And you were just a toddler when uh, this happened, right before your eyes. 
Um, but can you talk to us about how exactly you learned about your father and his work? And, you know, how did you actually learn about that? Because I know it was, you know, definitely difficult to grow through that. But you were just a baby, literally, when this happened. So how did you grow to learn through, you know, what Malcolm X did and what it was all about? Great questions, ladies. You know, you guys know Malika and Malak, my youngest, beautiful twin sisters. Yes, yes. That's, my, that's my sisters. Right? Even if you ask Malika and Malak, Malika passed away, God bless her. But, you know, I still, you know, talk about her as if she's still here awesome. with us. But even if you ask any of the twins about their father, they could tell you stories about him. They can tell you, you know, um, what his loves were, what his passions were. They could tell you about his humanity because my mother made sure that she kept his presence constant in our household. She did not want us to grow up with this abrupt sense of loss. You know, mm -hmm. she did not want us to grow up with us feeling that our father left us or our father didn't love us. And so my mother had daily conversations about daddy, about her husband, you know, what he would like, what he wouldn't like. But most importantly, we knew his value system. I came, I should say, I came to understand when I went to college that my mother safeguarded her husband's legacy because it was so, as I discovered, it was so inaccurate. And I think a lot of people are discovering that now. Yes, Miss Darling Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to stop you right there. At what point in your life did you, you just mentioned college, but at what point in your life did you start learning about your father as Malcolm X, as opposed to him as your father? When did you start understanding? Because it took a while for me to understand Reverend Al Sharpton as Reverend Al Sharpton as opposed to my father. That's right. And you really remind me of your father, Ashley. I, <laughs> you are like, you better go ahead. You're like, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's so beautiful because you learn much about who your father really is, who your mother really is by, you know, you young ladies and you, you know, just dynamic. And so I think what you also do um, is you bring such love and validation of your father, you know, to others, you know, just by the way that you present yourself, the work that you do, your passions and so forth. I learned about my father, the icon when I went to college and it was really, 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 it was so difficult, you know, because of my childhood. My, I, we grew up in a bubble of love. My mother was like everything. She was kind, she was loving, she was trustworthy, she was cool. You know, she used to send me flowers in a box. She would send me, you know, like I would get, you know, like you see on television, you get the clothes in the box, you right. open the box. You know, she was just so amazing. She was one of the time. She was so amazing. And, and, and she wanted her girls to grow up and understand what love was. Because wow. if we did not know love, Right. If we didn't know love in our household, we certainly are going to know love when we go out in the street. We certainly are going to know love when we see, you know, injustice. We're not going to lend ourselves. And, and that's just like what you girls do. You lend yourselves to the causes nonstop. I am a witness. You guys are amazing. And so that's why it's so nice to see your your women, your womanhood, you know, because. Sometimes we just want to like, you know, have flowers. We want to curl our hair a little bit. You know, we want to put on some nice smelling perfume. We don't want to be out there fighting. Soft life. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to get a little deeper about Jess Oyasa. Stick around. We'll be right back. Shabazz. A lot of people really struggle when they have a relative whose legacy is so historically significant. Uh, I know I did uh, for, for a very long time. I struggled with that. Has that ever been your experience? Uh, maybe, maybe um, more so. And I think for all of my sisters when my mother passed away, because, you know, our mother was like she was invincible to us. Yes. Right. To us too. And yeah. She protected us in every way and anything we wanted. We asked mommy and, you know, and she, she just never said no, you know, yeah. and, and we would even bring our friends, you know, could you imagine? My mother was probably like, <laughs> please, for God's sake. But she was, you know, she didn't show us 
And right. she didn't show us her vulnerable side. She showed me her vulnerable side as she, you know, maybe like a few years before she passed away. And, and I'm grateful, you know, and I remember the first time that she came into my office and she asked me, what should she do? Mm -hmm. And that really surprised me. Mm -hmm. And so I stopped everything I was doing, you know, to give my attention to my mother because she didn't show us her vulnerable side. And, and, and I'm grateful now, you know, that she wanted to make sure that we were solid in our foundation and our identity and our, you know, just everything that we didn't rely on others to determine our worth. Amen. And look at you, look at God. the phenomenal woman that you have truly, truly become. All um, of them. Yeah, really all of you. But do you see yourself, Ilyasa, as an extension of your father's legacy? Like, and if so, in what ways are you that extension? Because I love my mother so much and you know, there was nothing that she would not do for me. There was nothing that I would not do for her. And I know that she looked forward to retiring and appropriating the legacy of her husband at the Shabazz Center. And, you know, that is the reason why, you know, I, my, I steward my work there. You know, I do everything that it takes to make sure that the, the center is truly operational and that it's going to be a resource to to the communities here and, and far, because people all over the world are attracted to Malcolm. And we want to make sure, you know, that we're uh, util utilizing that fully. So I would say, um, you know, I, I'm a, I know that I'm a lot like my mother, everyone always tells me, but then I, I know that there are so many parts about me that's like my father, you know? Yes, yes, yes. 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 But speaking of the Shabbat Center, the Shabbat Center, in the wake of the past few years and the continued struggle for racial justice, how do you see your father's imprint in the midst of all of that? Mm. Well, let's see. You know, first of all, people try to write him out and pretend like he, that he didn't make this significant contribution. Right. He made a significant contribution because right. remember, in the 60s, we weren't sure who we were. We thought we were Negroes, you know, yeah. 1950s people marching, demonstrating, protesting, just as they, you know, do today. My father came along and said, we demand our human rights as your brother. There's no asking. We demand our human rights ordained by God. So he was not fearful. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he served God. He was led by his service to God. And, and, and um, so he introduced a human rights agenda for the first time to the civil rights movement. Wow. So my wow. father made a significant contribution. And when people um, would see these um, images of him that were created by others, instead of realizing he had a profound reaction to this horrible, um, inhumane treatment by people you, you know who who were a lighter complexion or or would by bigotry by injustice he had a profound reaction to injustice against anyone you know and and he simply insisted that america live up to her promise of liberty and justice for all of its citizens yes i just must underline what you just said he he introduced the human rights agenda to the civil rights movement and I don't think he gets enough credit for that. I don't think people understand the contribution to that. And speaking of that, something I really admire about you is your work with the younger generations and how you make sure that you teach your father's legacy and your mother's legacy um, and your own um, going forward about the significance of the movement and their contributions. So with that said, you've even worked with National Action Network and our NAN Youth Huddle Group. What do you do to try to impress upon the youth about your father and your mother's legacy? Well, you know, I think when we even look at our education curriculum, if we learn, right, first of all, you know, we're told that humanity, scientific proof, right, that humanity began in Africa. Say that. Right? Say that. And so if that is the case, right, then let's learn about the kingdoms of Egypt, of Benin, of Ghana, of Mali, of Congo. Let's learn about these just as we learn about the ancient history of, of Roman Greece, right? Let's know that everyone made a significant contribution to history, not just let white men landowners, right? But that Asians, uh, Native Americans, uh, Africans, 
that everyone made a significant contribution to history. And so our education uh, textbooks shouldn't just be based on one, you know, a, a white man. It should be based on all of the contributions that we've made, especially in this country. And then even when we take when we think about slavery, right? Had it not mm -hmm. been for our ancestors who were trafficked, right? Yeah. Who were who were targeted, whether they were here in the Americas or in Africa or wherever, black people, people of color, had it not been for all that they endured, the largest forced migration of a people in history of, of mankind and being held in bondage in the manner, you know, that was done to human beings. And in spite of that, we turned this country into the, a land of milk and honey. Mm -hmm. So had it not been for our ancestors, we no one would have the opportunity to call the United States of America their home. And so we need to make sure that we are controlling the narratives like you ladies are doing, you know, and I think it's extremely important for our young people to understand the power of who we are so that we understand that we are worthy of self-love, that we are worthy of a quality education, that we're worthy to participate in mainstream e the economy, right? And however uh, God has made us. Talk that talk, sis. <laughs> now, I mean, just hearing you, I mean, you are phenomenal. And everyone is seeing Ilyasa Shabazz and you carry such a heavy load with everything that you're doing. So tell us, cause I think I know a little bit about you. So tell us, you know, just for kicks, what's your stress reliever, sis? Stress relief. Well, um, let me see. Stress relief. Stress relief. You know, I really love the the ocean, the water. I'm I'm just such a fan of it. I need it, and I always like to pretend that I am someplace else when I'm really working. You know, I I, I like to use my imagination. Um, but I love my girlfriends. I love my family. Um, yes. and young people. And we're a part of a, a group called Daughters of the Movement. We mm -hmm. come together uh, with other like-minded uh, sisters, daughters, granddaughters of those who have broken barriers and been really influential and prominent in the movement in different facets from funders to leaders to, you know, uh, to those who, you know, help to run uh, the, the behind the scenes and the process. All of this goes together. And we love to come together and have our dinners and share with one another. Um, and it's really, really an amazing to me, a stress reliever that I look forward to and really appreciate in my life. Um, and so glad to have you uh, to be a part of that with me, Ilyasa. Um, and, you know, thank you so much for everything that you share and everything that you do. Um, you know, I, I, I love you and I, I really, really appreciate you in so many ways. So, Ilyasa, I have another question. Um, so I know that you, you are your father and your mother's legacy, but did you ever go through the process of wanting to define yourself outside of your parents' name? Mm -hmm. Absolutely never, ever. I love my parents so much. I can't tell you. I'm so grateful for, you know, all that they gave. Um, I'm so grateful that they were my role models. Um, you know, it, I, I'm just so, I, I have so much gratitude. And um, and I don't think there really is a day that passes where, you know, I, like that, I have photographs of them on my wall. I, they're just in my heart, the, my books, you know, me being at the Shabazz Center, um, all of that just fills me. That's beautiful. So much. Absolutely. That's beautiful. beautiful. And speaking about the Shabazz Center and your books, what are the personal projects that you are most proud of? The personal projects, well, my my favorite book, my most recent <laughs> book is The Yes, Olympics, right? <laughs> yes. Let's go. Show us, show, show us. us. And, and, and let me tell you why I love this book so much. I was very, I mean, there, I was not going to stop until I did this book because, mm -hmm. you know, my father, this whole notion of him being illiterate when he went to jail and that he learned, he, came, he walked out being an icon, it's impossible. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, because if that's the case, then it means that we don't need the village. Right. Mm -hmm. We all need the village. Um, mm -hmm. Had it not been for his mother and father, when he did find himself in a corner, he might not have been able to walk out as Malcolm X the icon. Right. His mother, his father instilled specific values. You know, they were two activists. His father was the chapter president of the Garvey movement. His mother was the um, recording secretary. And, and 
And, you know, there are many books that are being published by the work of his mother. His mm -hmm. father was the uh, was on the Parent Teacher Association, PTA. Mm -hmm. His father was a minister. Uh, his mm -hmm. father was a landowner. And actually the home that he the land, the home that he built, he was told he could purchase the land because it was premium land reserved for whites only but he couldn't wow. live on it and he lived on it. And that's why the first home burnt down, second home burnt down, third home, he was assassinated, killed. And his mother, you know, years later was put in an institution against her will, family torn apart. But thank God the values were instilled that when Malcolm would become 13, he would be the president, you know, of his all white class. He would be top of his class and, 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 you know, sure. that was a that was Absolutely. it. That. Ilyasa, thank you so much for sharing with us this part of your life. It's so personal and yet part of something so much larger. When we come back, we have one final question with Ilyasa Shabazz. Ilyasa Shabazz, and we've been talking about living in the legacy of her father, Malcolm X. But we want to get a bit more up close and personal with her. Okay, Ilyasa, we know you're booked and busy. <laughs> Tell us some of the special projects you're working on. Well, so two of my books, I know I didn't even finish talking about, but two of my books are being turned into um, television series that I'm really excited about. We're working on the news. And yeah, I'm really excited about that. And um, there's something else. That's why I can't get you on the phone lately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even right now, I feel a little, uh, you know, a little flustered. But I love you girls so much that anything that you ask of me, I would never say no to you. Oh, okay. we love you. We love you. Yeah. We won't keep you too much longer. Um, we just have a couple more and things. You guys look so beautiful. I love you. This red dress, Miss Ashley. Love it. It's just gorgeous. And I, you're looking all stately. And I wanted to shock the people. Yeah, they got, you know they had to get mother together, honey. Yeah. Speaking of shocking, what is something about you that you think people will be shocked to learn? Yeah. Um, maybe I have a great sense of humor. I love music. I used to work in the music industry. Um, you know. That that is shocking. I didn't know That's that. Funny. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So we do have one more question for you, Ilyasa, and we appreciate your time and you spending time with us. We can spend time with you all, all day. day if we could. All I mean, day. I have done that on some occasions. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we do have one more question for you. So as children of celebrities, we have the privilege of being exposed to people who are at the top of the game in their fields. Yeah. What is the piece of game-changing advice that you have received? Who gave you the advice and why was it a game-changer? Hmm. Good question, Ash. Yeah, you better go, girl. And listen to the way she asked that question. I mean, my goodness, I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, I learned from the best. Uh, you know, that's that's funny. I think it it really is about the self love. Oh, my mother, I tell you. But even saying find the good and praise it, right? So that there is no victim complex, you know, <laughs> find the good and praise it. I, if I had a victim complex, right, mm -hmm. I would not be standing in front of you now, right? I would not be able to have a strong conversation with you as you young ladies, right? Because let's face it, you know, a lot of stuff has happened that we've endured, yes. Yes. right? But I'm just not letting anybody win. You know, I know God made me. I'm proud of my parents, right? And and I know who I am. And I think that that's probably the reason that I take, you know, the curriculum that my parents gave me. And I, I, and I use that with, you know, my professorship. I use that with this intergenerational discussion, this leadership development at the Shabazz Center, you know, with my books for young people, because I wanna make sure that as many young people who might not have that will get it. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Well, Ilyasa Shabazz, you hit everything on the nail. You're always phenomenal uh, to speak with and to be with. We love you so much. And thank you so much for joining us today, Ilyasa. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. We hope to see you in person soon. <laughs> Take good, good care of yourself. Um, stay safe. And hopefully we can get together and, and you know, just hang out like sisters do. And break sisters bread do. and fellowship. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much, Ilyasa. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are amazing. You look good. You look great. I love your wall. I love everything. And I, I pray that you guys do, you know, really, really great because I know that, you know, this is something that is needed and, and, and you guys, you know, come on, you have it. Look at Miss <laughs> Ashley over there. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, Bye, guys. Guys. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Bye. Okay, I love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the show. Make sure to catch us next time on the Sharpton Sisters, right here on Fox Soul.